So this talk will be about how, are we, how do we generalize machine learning to non-Euclidean and in particular graph structure data. So today we are witnessing the renaissance of uh, AI. Um, there has been amazing um, breakthroughs happening in all kinds of different machine learning technologies and applications from um, image computer vision, um, question answering, uh, game playing, speech recognition, self-driving, and so on and so forth. And what has really given rise to this um, revolution has been the deep learning methodology, um, which I demonstrate here uh, by the recent breakthroughs in uh, image recognition that were all thank you to the deep learning. And the important thing that comes out of uh, deep learning is this notion of representation learning, where in traditional machine learning we would, or in classical computer vision, we would first handcraft the features and then use a simple uh, classifier to make predictions based on those features. Uh, modern deep learning systems allow us to build end-to-end -end machine learning capability where we both learn how to generate the features, how to featureize the data, as well as uh, make uh, the final uh, predictions, and we can do this in an end-to-end -end way. One other important uh, thing to keep in mind is that the data sets kind of trump um, uh, algorithms in a sense that for breakthroughs in machine learning and AI, here I show them on the left, it generally takes uh, for this breakthrough to happen, it only takes about three years between when the data becomes available and when the breakthrough happens versus about uh, 18, 20 years between the time of the algorithm first being proposed and the breakthrough happening. So basically, there is this unreasonable effectiveness of large scale um, data that kind of trumps uh, the algorithms. Um, and when we look where the biggest advancements so far have happened, they have happened in natural language processing, text processing, uh, speech recognition, speech processing, as well as computer vision, we realize that, that our current um, deep learning toolbox is designed for very simple data types. It's basically designed for linear sequences like text and audio, or it's designed for uh, grids or fixed size matrices, which basically uh, means images. And the key research question that my uh, research group at Stanford is trying to address is, how do we develop neural networks that are much more broadly applicable? How do we develop neural networks that are applicable to complex data types? And in, in particular, we are working with graphs and relational data, which are becoming the new frontier for uh, deep learning uh, research. So the core question that we are trying to answer is, how do we capture the graph structure as well as the node and edge attributes and feature information in a unified end-to-end -end, uh, trainable uh, way? And graphs and relational data are very important because our group is working across many different applications, from uh, knowledge graphs and thinking about how do we encode prior knowledge and reason over it, to um, social networks and social recommendations, um, gene re regulatory and protein-protein interaction networks in uh, core computational fundamental biology, as well as representing computer code as graphs, functional networks in brain as graphs, as well as uh, 3D shapes. And applications of this range from computer graphics to virtual reality to robotics, self-driving, uh, medicine, um, and drug design. And uh, the methods we are developing, as I mentioned, can do anything from basically being applied in large-scale uh, recommender systems, we are right now working a lot with physicists on uh, doing neutrino detection and various kinds of uh, large scale uh, learning, large scale physics simulations, um, uh, as well as applications in pharmacology, drug discovery, um, as well as chemistry. And uh, what I want to do in this talk is guide you through to some of the, our uh, recent developments. So the framework that allows us to, to make these breakthroughs and learn in an end-to-end -end way over graphs is called graph representation uh, learning. And the, the class of models we are investigating go under the name of graph neural networks. And the basic idea is to, uh, to take the underlying relational structure and interpret it as the computational graph of the underlying neural network. So basically, a biological network, we can interpret it as a computational graph of the neural network. 
And what this means is that now what we have to do is we have to learn how to propagate and aggregate information across the network to make a prediction at a given node. And this aggregation propagation has to be such that it will capture the local neighborhood, the local network structure around the red node, as well as aggregate and help us um, um, fuse all kinds of node feature information that, that is uh, present in the network. And the idea is that every node in the network, like this yellow node A, will create its own neural network structure based on the, new, based on the network neighborhood in the underlying input graph. So for example, node A has three neighbors, B, C, and D. So in, our, in the first layer of the graph neural network, it collects information from B, C, and D. But then node B, for example, has uh, neighbors A and C, so it collects information from them. And what is novel is that every node gets to define its own network structure, which means that this network has to both learn how to process information from neighbors and the neighbors of neighbors, as well as it has to learn how to capture its own structure so that it will also capture the, the local neighborhood network structure around a given uh, target node. And this is very different because we are usually used to working with a single network here we are working with different neural networks, basically one for each uh, node of the underlying input graph. Um, and we are making core advancements in this area that I want to quickly show you um, some results about. First is really the realization in what kind of embeddings shall we be learning. And generally, when we think of embeddings, we think of embeddings as points in Euclidean space. But Euclidean space is very constrained. And for example, it does not allow us to embed hierarchical and tree-like structures, which is what is common in uh, graph data or in any kind of taxonomies and so on, where basically we have exponentially more children at every level and, and Euclidean space is not able to capture that. But if you look at the mathematics and um, identify some interesting um, uh, sub areas there, then you find that hyperbolic spaces and hyperbolic embeddings allow us to, to, to embed this kind of hierarchical uh, tree-like structures. So we have developed what we call hyperbolic graph convolutional neural networks that basically allow us to do neural network um, of operations in the hyperbolic space. Um, and not even that, we allow our hyperbolic space to have a trainable uh, uh, um, um, uh, uh, curvatures in different layers. And what this allows us to do is, in, in some sense, it allows us to smoothly um, interpolate between the Euclidean space as well as the fully hyperbolic space uh, with high curvature. And what this means is that uh, what we find out is that depending on the structure of the input data, this, uh, this uh, interpolation is, is very important because, for example, as I show you in this case, as the space becomes more and more hyperbolic, um, the, as the curvature increases, um, our predictive performance is actually increasing. So for this particular data set that I show you here, um, Euclidean embeddings are, are inappropriate, while the hyperbolic embeddings uh, with certain level of curvature are much more appropriate. And what we find out is that for certain data sets, we can increase um, the performance by a huge margin. So for example, we can decrease the error um, for about 60% in terms of link prediction and node classification over current um, state-of-the-art uh, Euclidean embedding space uh, graph methods. So this is one um, important methodological advance we've been working on. Another one is that we would really like to learn over large scale data. And what happens in many cases is that large scale data is usually separate in many small data sets, each one with its own prediction task. And, so, and this is especially common in um, drug discovery, chemistry, well, um, and in natural sciences where it's very expensive to get uh, and collect uh, the data. So you have a lot of small data sets um, and the question is, how do we learn across all of them? So a naive strategy would be to say, let's build one model that is able to then make predictions for all kinds of different predictive tasks. And um, you, can, you can try to do this, uh, for example, for chemistry, for classification of molecules, where we represent every molecule as a graph. And what it turns out is that if you do this kind of naive pre-training strategy, it actually leads to worse models than what would happen if you would just train uh, a very small, simple model on the small data uh, that you have on the small task that you care about. 
So we have started asking, how could we develop um, general pre-training strategies for graph neural networks that would allow us to pre-train a complex model on a set of related tasks so that when a um, target task of interest comes and the little label data that we have, uh, how do we, how do we, how do we uh, make the model uh, most um, accurate? And we have discovered that it is, a same, it is very important to pre-train both at the node as well as at the uh, level of the entire graphs. So basically, we want to pre-train or train the model both on node-level tasks as well as on the graph-level tasks. And this is very important because this means that node and graph-level embeddings uh, are kind of in synchrony. It means that, no, that our embedding space has the nice structure where individual node embeddings are informative, but also when we collect the node embeddings and aggregate them into the embedding of the graph, the, uh, the, space, still, the space still makes sense and the embeddings are uh, coherent. And if we do that, we see that we can we achieve uh, big performance improvements over uh, naive pre-training strategies, and we also eliminate and avoid uh, negative transfer, which means um, our models work strictly better than simple models uh, trained on small data. And this is really important because now it allows us to train high-quality models on little data because we have effective way to pre-train the model on some uh, open source uh, large scale data and then just specialize it on the little private data uh, we have. So what are some next steps we are working in the kind of fundamentals of graph neural networks research space? First is that we are working on more expressive graph neural networks from the theoretical uh, point of view so it will allow us to build even more uh, accurate models. At the same time, we are working with various industrial partners Many of them are here today in the audience, like Toshiba, Amazon, and uh, Docomo, on scalable, large-scale um, uh, uh, graph neural networks, on extending this to dynamic uh, graph structures um, and uh, self-supervised learning, for example, for fraud and anomaly detection, as well as to uh, time series-based uh, recommender systems. What I want to do in the remaining uh, of my talk, I want to also show you two more applications of this fundamental technology we are developing. First one is, how do we make complex arbitrary predictions over large-scale incomplete knowledge graphs? Right? Knowledge graphs are heterogeneous graphs that allow us to capture relationships between different entities. Uh, they are super useful to model heterogeneous data domains. Um, they are useful to capture prior knowledge. Um, and they allow us to make complex, robust uh, predictions. They are very useful in any kind of question answering, common sense reasoning applications as well. Um, so the question is, how can we answer um, arbitrary complex queries, or how do we make arbitrary complex predictions inside these uh, knowledge graphs? So our work uh, is really trying to pioneer this idea where we can take the knowledge graph, embed it into the embedding space, and simultaneously also learn how to reason or how to navigate this embedding space. So that when a particular query, a particular task, prediction tasks arrives, we are able to very quickly execute. it. So for example, if we think in the context of question answering, somebody may want to come and say, who are the presidents of European countries that have never uh, held the Football World Cup? And you could take this piece of text and you could break it down into a set of uh, uh, simple predictive operators, like saying, oh, I want to start with the continent Europe and I want ident to uh, identify all the European countries. And then I want to take a uh, World Cup and identify all the World Cup hosts um, and then um, find all the countries that never held the World Cup, take the, take the intersection of these two sets, and then identify the president of, the, of all those countries. And we have developed a very general probabilistic approach to this that allows us to uh, make accurate predictions where we basically learn how to uh, transform distributions over the sets of entities that represent the answer across this embedding space. So what I try to show you here at the bottom is the depiction of this computation graph, this prediction graph on the top, where I show you how the probability distribution changes over the entities uh, embedded in this space. And this allows us to make very accurate predictions or very uh, over the predictive queries that we have never seen over training. And we can combine these operators in arbitrary ways to make uh, uh, accurate 
predictions. What we are currently working on in this space is that we are uh, working on a reasoning engine over general uh, knowledge graphs for common sense reasoning as well as uh, uh, open-ended question answering. Um, and then also working with uh, various uh, domain partners with um, JP Morgan Chase as well as uh, GlaxoSmithKline on applications to uh, economic banking uh, knowledge graphs as well as uh, knowledge graphs in computational biology, chemistry, uh, and drug uh, discovery. And then the, the last um, application that I want to quickly mention is um, uh, a collaboration we, we have with uh, Google DeepMind about learning to simulate complex systems, right? So we can think of complex systems being defined as the interactions between the particles. And if we have interactions between the particles, then we can learn how particles um, uh, interact. So we could kind of simulate and predict the state of the system in the future. And this means that we can learn, for example, molecular dynamics, uh, airflow dynamics, or even some kind of uh, large-scale physics-based uh, dynamics. And the methods we are developing can be, can be generalized to simulate, model, and predict complex materials, even um, production grids, applications in robotics, as well as, for example, factories or production lines where we have a lot of different entities that uh, interact uh, with each other. And our approach is that we propose a, a general purpose neural network uh, simulation or forecasting uh, framework that allows us to train only on a single step, but then generalize to thousands of steps, uh, work with different types of, in our case, materials from water to rigid bodies, as well as to large scale systems of, let's say, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands uh, of particles. And the way we do this is, is very intuitive, right? So basically we represent the underlying domain with a set of particles, and then we create a, a contact graph, a neighborhood graph, uh, based on the, the spatial relationships between these uh, particles. And as, as these particles interact with each other, this means that particles get to exchange messages and tell each other about their state, their velocity, their uh, forces. And uh, we can basically learn neural networks that allow us to predict what will be the future state of the particle, um, and then basically extract the dynamics and move the particles, create the new graph, the particles tell each other uh, where they are going to be in the future, uh, move the particles, and so on and so forth. And you can see here that basically we are simulating this water with a set of particles, and we have the underlying network over this uh, set of particles. And this, our framework, allows us to do really kind of crazy generalization. We can only train how to model uh, the water, as I showed you, but now we can generalize this um, without any need to train to much more complex water simulations, for example, here where we have um, various um, uh, much more complex uh, simulations with uh, different types of flow flows, or um, uh, here where we have a very different environment. Um, the next steps here is that we are really trying to take this technology and push it into applications. So for example, we are seeing how this could be used to do large scale oil field simulations. We have a collaboration with Saudi Aramco, as well as to fundamental physics about learning high energy plasma simulation with the uh, uh, Stanford uh, linear accelerator uh, Slack, um, their second uh, collaboration. And then I want to return to our initial question, which was, we need big data in order to make the deep re learning revolution happen. So um, especially for graph-based learning, there is lack of large-scale uh, data. So in order to track progress, identify issues with current approaches with graph um, representation learning, it is crucial for us to develop diverse, challenging, uh, realistic benchmark data sets for machine learning with graphs. So we have developed what we call open graph benchmark, that is a set of large scale realistic benchmark data sets for graph machine learning. It's not only, a set of, not only a set of ready to use data sets with different tasks, but it also comes with a code base to load, construct, and represent graphs. Um, um, and also comes with code base and for performance metrics and fast model evaluation, as well as different data splits so that all the models can be evaluated in, in the same coherent way. So uh, we cover different tasks in terms of node, link, and graph uh, classification, different domains from biology, chemistry, social, and information networks, all the way to knowledge graphs, as well as different size scales from small graphs 
to medium to large scale, which is 10 million plus. And of course, small graphs fit into the memory of a single GPU, while the large scale requires much more uh, work. And if you are interested in this project, um, we have it available at ogb.stanford.edu. Um, you can write us at this email. We have the core development team, as well as the steering committee um, that provides input and guides uh, this project as it is moving forward. Um, so with this, I would like to thank all my PhD students, postdocs, as well as research staff, um, industrial collaborators and partners, as well as uh, funding uh, agencies. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm very happy to take uh, questions later.